Hello and welcome to Zenata Consulting's beginner series. Uh, this is going to be our final video here walking through Zoho Analytics. And in this video, we're going to cover the actual creation of a dashboard. Um, so in our previous video, we walked through how to create a report, um, both a pivot and a chart. And in the video before that, we walked through, you know, looking at the data and how to kind of get an understanding of what's living behind the scenes. Um, so today we're going to put it all together and actually go ahead and create a report. From Zenata Consulting, I am Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the walkthrough. Um, so here to get started, you know, we've opened up our primary workspace, which we created before. Um, we'll see from our Explorer, we have a couple of these reports under our custom reporting folder, which again, we created in our previous video in this series. So today we're ready to go ahead and make ourselves a dashboard. So up here in the top left under the create tab, I'll pull that up and I'll go down here to our dashboards. And so now I am working a new dashboard. And so here I'll call this our pipeline dashboard, maybe pipeline management dashboard. Let's be a little fancy today. And so again, a dashboard is really just a place where you can put more than one report, as well as some widgets, which I'll show you how to create um, some text delimiters and images and things like that, if you so choose. Let's go ahead and add some reports to our dashboard. So to get started over here on the left-hand side, similar to when you're creating a report, you have all those various tabs to get your data. Um, here to create a dashboard, we have all of our sections to pull in our reports. So maybe up, at, up here at the top, we want to add our pipeline. And this is basically, you know, breaking out our deals based on the various stages. So here you see in the bottom left, I'm kind of adjusting the sizes of these components. And then below that, maybe we want to break it out into a little bit more detail and see these based on when they're going to close month over month. Again, still keeping their stage in mind so we know where they're at in the process. And so here I'm going to go ahead and save so that I don't regret it later. And I'm going to save it to our Zanata custom reporting folder. And we'll see here one interesting thing is, if you remember in our previous video, we had added a filter to our deals and pipeline pivot table here for the deal owner name. And so because we've added that report to this dashboard, it's automatically pulled that into our user filters up at the top so that we can use that to filter all of our dashboard components below. The other big user filter up at the top that we almost always want to add is the timeline filter. Now the timeline filter is a fantastic thing. Uh, so what this does is it gives you the ability to filter multiple different uh, components based on different uh, date axes. And so what I mean by that is using the timeline filter, if I go into the active pipeline by amount report, and I go under more and I go into options, I can actually choose exactly which date column I want timeline filter to apply to. And so maybe I want it to apply to created time in some of our reports, but closing date in other reports. You can do that without having to have different filters for those dates. Now, in this case, I want to use closing date on both of these reports. Um, a big example of when you would want to apply this to different date fields is let's say that part of our pipeline report or pipeline dashboard was going to be, you know, related to leads. Well, leads have a totally different set of columns than deals. So we're going to have to apply the timeline filter to those different columns to make sure that things uh, go ahead and filter properly. Now, under the timeline filter section, there's something that I almost always do. Um, so inside of here, we can go ahead and choose all these various different components that we want available, but that's not all that we can use. So we're almost always going to want to add some additional values here, right? We're going to want to be able to look at last month, last three months, maybe last six, you know, maybe previous quarter, right? Previous year. So we'll go ahead and kind of add some additional values that we can quickly grab, but we can also set a default if we so choose. Now you don't always need a default. Um, in this case, I actually don't want one, but if you did want to have a default, you just go ahead and click this star. And now anytime you pull this up, it's going to default to showing you only things this month. 
And so now I'll go ahead and save that and go into our view mode. And so now we'll see, you know, we've got some deals closing in August and some deals closing in September. And so if I go to our timeline filter and I go ahead and I click this month, both of these reports are gonna refresh and now only show data based on this current month, based on however I have the timeline filter applied to those reports. It works the same way with deal owner and with any of these other fields. Now, again, I wanna highlight something that you can do here um, that's a little unique to Zoho Analytics is under our user filters, we don't just have to use fields from our primary module, which in this case is deals. Maybe I wanna go in and I wanna pull something from accounts and only show accounts that are a certain type. <clears throat> so I can go ahead and drag that into the user filters. I can go back to our view mode. And now maybe I wanna pull this down and I only care about analyst types. And so now I've filtered both of these reports that way. Or maybe I only care about integrators. And so now in this case, it's filtered it that way. And so on and so forth, where you can go ahead and choose these different filters and your report is automatically gonna represent those. Now these filters do stack. So if I were to put something like, you know, investor, and I've got one report here and it's closing in August. So if I were to say, show me ones that are closing in the previous month that are investors, now I'm not gonna have any data because it's applying both of these filters at the same time. So it's important to know that is that the filters are not just you know, one at a time. You can have multiple different filters at the top and you can apply them all together. And so now that we've kind of created some of our user filters and we've added our primary reports, we might wanna create some additional widgets that kind of give us a quick number right at the top of the page that just slaps us in the face and gives us the primary things that we care about. You know, you'll have all these various reports that you can dig into and get some great insights from, but sometimes you just want that high level data. So up here in the top right, I can go ahead and add a widget. Now I'm gonna zoom my screen out here for just a second because it gets a little bit tight if I have it zoomed in. So I'm gonna add a widget here under our columns. I can go ahead and choose a column that I wanna pull from. So in this case, if let's say I wanted to do how many deals are supposed to close this month. I can go ahead in here and go to our ID and do a distinct count. Now, when I'm making a widget, maybe I don't want the timeline filter to apply at all. I just want a hard code a filter in, right? That says, based on our closing date, relative to today, I just wanna look at things that are gonna close this month. And now here, it's gonna give us a silly little label. So we'll say deals closing this month. And so now we've got a nice little KPI looking at, you know, what are we expecting to close in this given month? You know, maybe we wanna also do one of these for how, much, how many dollars we expect to have coming in. So because I already have those filters set up how I want them, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. I'm gonna edit it. Rather than a count of our IDs, we're gonna do a sum of our amount. I'm gonna go into settings, and then we're gonna do expected revenue this month. And so now I have my total here for all of the deals that are supposed to close within this particular month. Now, sometimes you're gonna create one of these and you're gonna see, hmm, that doesn't look quite right. Right. When we look at this, this just does not really seem to be how we want it. 806,000. If I look at my data down here, you know, I can see that you know, things are not really lining up um, how I would expect them to. And so what you'll find is you know, sometimes you've just got to tweak your columns a little bit or tweak your filters. So I'll go in here. I'll make sure the closing date is set to this month. You know, I might want to also add that stage can't be closed lost. So I'll drag that in and exclude close lost. And now I'll apply this. Now I see a value of 201,000. And if we look at our pipeline here that's giving us that total, now things are starting to line up and make a little bit more sense. Um, so you know, when you bump into those little things, you're gonna just wanna cross check your data 
right? Anytime you create a new value, maybe go into the CRM and look at the data there or compare it to another report inside of analytics that you know to be correct, just to make sure that things are looking proper and that you know, you're not, um, not having any issues with your representation. Now, again, we'll wrap up this in just a moment, but there are a ton of different options here that you can use these widgets for. A really popular one would be something like a dial chart. Right, so maybe I want to say that we want to look at our revenue year to date against some type of target. Right, so maybe I want to go in, I want to look at our sum of our amount. And, you know, it's created some targets here for us. We can set those up down here. In this case, let's just kind of take a look at what these look like. Now, if we were going to look at only deals that we've won, maybe we want to drag in our status and say something like revenue progress to goal. And now we have a nice little tracker here that's basically, you know, how are we trending against some type of target? Now, you know, creating this, the first thing I would think is that surely we need some type of date on here. So maybe we wanna pull in our closing date as well and make that for, you know, this year as an example, just so that if we did have anything closing last year, it wouldn't inflate our numbers or our progress here as we're looking at a report that's for the current year. And then from there, you know, looking at our dashboard, we now have some nice little KPIs. How many deals do we expect to close? How many dollars are those gonna be worth? How many deals have we actually won so far this year against a goal that we've set for ourselves? And then down the page, we have our pipeline and our pivot table that kind of breaks things out for us. Again, all of these different components are gonna to filter together when we pull filters. And they would all pull together if we were to look at particular account types or deal owners. You know, All of these different factors are gonna to filter together. And so with that, that's gonna wrap it up here for our video on how to create a dashboard in analytics. I do hope that this was useful for you. If it was, be sure to subscribe down below so that you stay in the loop as we create additional training videos like this one, as well as long form webinars and our weekly podcast. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you next time.